In this episode, we're gonna talk about breaking down the sheet goods to make the top, bottoms, and sides of the carcasses for these upper and lower cabinets. Let's get to work. First step in the process is gonna be break down our plywood. Um, with the Festool system, you've got our TS-55 and you've got our guide rails. We have a large variety of guide rails, as you can see up here. Um, we also have a way of connecting guide rails. You can connect two guide rails, um, two shorter guide rails, if you don't have space in your shop to store one guide rail or to transport one long guide rail. When they sell plywood, it's typically oversized. Uh, that is because the edges are not perfectly straight, they're rough, they may be damaged, it's also not square. I don't have a perfectly straight edge to reference off of to get my straight cuts. Uh, you can always use a table saw. Um, that's definitely a way you can do it. What I don't like about table saws is they take up so much space. Um, in my shop, I have a smaller shop, so the TS-55 and a guide rail is perfect because it's just the footprint of the plywood that I need. I don't need in-feed and out-feed room like I would with a table saw. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the guide rail real quick. Um, on the bottom of our guide rails are these two black strips. These are non-skid strips. So when it's on the material, uh, by the time you get the weight of the saw in there, it's very difficult to move, which is what you want. You wanna stay stationary. Also on the guide rail, we have this clear plastic piece. This is your splinter guard. This is what's gonna keep the material from tearing up. Now obviously when we're ripping, we're not gonna have that much uh, chance of tear out. When we go to cross cut, that's gonna be very important. Next thing we wanna do is get that straight edge on this piece of plywood. Remember, we've got about a half inch on each side, so it doesn't have to be exactly accurate. I don't have to measure eighth inch down here, eighth inch down there. So what I do is I learned this tip from somebody else on YouTube. This is the limit stop that comes with the TS-55, and it has a small lip right there. I'll use that lip, push it up against my splinter guard there, and down there, and now I'm about the same dimension all the way down. First couple times you cut with the guide rail, I recommend clamping the guide rail down, not just relying on the non-skid strips. On the underneath side of the guide rail, we can put the clamp right in, slide it up to the material, push it up, and lock it down. Do that on both ends, and now it definitely will not move. And we're ready to start making some cuts. Um, before we do that, there's a couple things we have to adjust on here, but to learn more how to do that, head over to our YouTube channel and there's full videos on the complete setup of all of our saws for cutting on a guide rail. I prefer spending most of my time in the shop cutting and making things, not cleaning up after myself, so that's why I always use one of our dust extractors. A question I get asked a lot is uh, the setting, depth settings on the saw itself. If you look right here, we've got two different levels of depth setting. One says FS and the other one says nothing. This is an FS guide rail. What that FS stands for, that accounts for the thickness of the guide rail. So when I am on the guide rail, I want to set my measurement, whatever I'm cutting, to that. I'm cutting about three quarters, so I'm gonna set it just one notch above three quarter. That'll cut through, but it won't cut through my table. Last step before we cut, is make sure you have your safety glasses and your hearing protection. As I'm cutting, I'm running at full speed. I've got my depth set. I typically will put my hand under the hose, grab it here, let the saw do the work. So now that we've got a good reference edge uh, ripped with the TS-55, I can focus on my cut list. Um, to make all these cuts, I could go back and forth and measure and mark and use a pencil and a tape measure or a folding rule, um, but I've found in my experience that's usually when I make mistakes. The pencil line's on the wrong side, something like that. So I can use these parallel guides that'll help me stay more accurate. These parallel guides will do repeatable parallel rips or cuts. Uh, I'm not worried about squaring up the ends yet. I am just want to make all my cuts parallel, then we'll square everything up later. I always push my first parallel guide all the way up against the material. I'll tighten the green screw down on the top, then don't forget to push that lever down on the bottom. And then I'll go to the other side. So I'll line the bracket up with the edge, then tighten the screw on top, the lever on the bottom. And now I can even up that gap, the same on both sides. All right, so next I have to set the dimension that I'm gonna be ripping this to. I'm gonna be ripping it to 580 millimeters. Now. For all you out there that don't use the metric system, that's okay, we have an imperial set of parallel guides as well. To set 
the distance. You wanna make sure that you use this arrow right here. And I'll put it right on 580. And then lock that down. Same process on the other side. Find your 580, line up that arrow, lock it down. Now it's just a matter of pushing forward the guide rail. And now it's referenced at 580 on both sides. You're probably wondering if these come pre-calibrated. They do not. You have to calibrate them to your guide rail and to your saw. If you go to our YouTube channel, you can watch a whole video on how to calibrate the parallel guides and the parallel guide extensions. Uh, a lot of people think this is a very awkward cut. What they forget is that the saw is guided by the guide rail. I am just simply pushing it along. So what I'll do is I'll get myself inside the parallel guides to start rather than starting out here. And after I start making my cut moving around, I'll just start right here and then make my cut. Once that cut's done, I can remove my saw, slide my plywood out, and then I can just move the parallel guides to make my next cut. Next thing, I'm just gonna reset my dimension for my next rip cut. Since I have this all set up and calibrated, it's just a matter of resetting this one dimension. Don't push on each end, just come to the center, push in the middle, and I'll get them both tightened up. All right, so I went ahead and I flipped the guide rail around because now I need to switch my rips down to 75 millimeters. To do so, I'm gonna have to change my stop from the parallel guide over here to the parallel guide extension because the parallel guide stops at about 190. The extensions go all the way down from 230 down to zero. So I can set that at 75. Lock that into place, do the same thing on the other one. Getting ready to do some cross cuts here. I just wanted to let you know that I changed the blade. I had a 28 tooth ripping blade on there from prior. I just put our 48 tooth finish blade that comes with the saw. Another thing I'm gonna change out, I'm gonna change from our clear plastic viewing window to one of our splinter guards. Because before when I was cutting, for one, I was ripping so there wasn't a lot of tear out. Um, and two, now I'm going to have two pieces of material that I wanna cut and I'm cross cutting. I said before, when you're cross cutting, there's more chance of tear out. So now we have a splinter guard on the out feed side of the blade and a splinter guard on our guide rail for the inside of the blade. So before we start cross cutting, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the MFT setup we have here. Um, all these parts and pieces that you see um, come with our full MFT set. I have a whole setup video on our YouTube channel that walks you through the process, uh, shows you exactly how to square it up, how to set everything so that it's, it allows you to do repetitive cuts over and over again. I always like to work smarter, not harder. So the first piece I'm gonna do is about 768 millimeters or 30 and a quarter. I'm actually gonna cut it quite a bit longer. Well, not quite a bit, about a quarter inch to a half inch longer. Um, and I'll show you why here in a minute. So I got my mark. Set this up, slide it down to my pencil line. Now that I have that cut to length, I can just flip it over. Got my square end on this side. Now I just have to clean up this edge to the exact length. It's a lot easier than flipping this whole entire large piece over. I'm just working with a smaller piece. 
So I'll come back, get my exact measurement. Now I can slide this piece all the way down. I know these two pieces are gonna be exactly the same. Those will be my base cabinet sides. For this one, I'm gonna cut it a little bit shorter because it's gonna be the middle of my cabinet. Now I have my two sides and the base, the bottom for my base cabinet. So now we're gonna walk through the same process, but with the pieces for my upper cabinet. Because the sides for my upper and lower cabinet are gonna be the same height, I can utilize the same stop. Get it close, cut this end, flip it over and square it up. Flip this piece over, lower my flag stop, cut it to length. I'll cut the top and bottom for my upper cabinet. Now the sides and the bottoms uh, for my upper and lower cabinets are all cut to length. If you'd like to continue watching this cabinet build, click here or watch this video. And don't forget to subscribe.